how the hell are you supporting Donald Trump at this point? At this point. <laughs> I, I'm talking right. about I'm, I'm talking yeah. four count. I'm talking about four charges, 91 counts. I mean, people are talking about he gonna be he might you you could be in prison running a country from prison for crying a lot. Welcome back, warriors. It's me, Linda B. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Today, I wanted to share with y'all Byron Donalds. He is a congressman out of Florida. He's a Republican and he is pro-Trump. Here he is on the Stephen A. Smith show. And Stephen A. Smith is asking him, of course, a lot of political questions and talking about, you know, the, the Republican Party and how it has not really reached out to Black Americans and, and lots of different questions. But before we get started, I want you all to remember to like, comment, share, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to watch it all the way to the end and hit the notification bell. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. When we think about Republicans, though, we think about it as, as, as a Black man. I will tell you this. You think about, you hear people like yourself and others take the position that once upon a time there was a need for affirmative action, but that time is over. Uh, you yeah. sit up there and you, of course, we want less government, but it's almost like the Republican side wants the eradication of government, where if it were not for government intervention, where would civil rights legislation have gone, where would Voter Rights Act have gone, et cetera, et cetera. And so when I you talk to me about it, I've never seen your interview with Roland Martin, and that's shame on me because I love my brother Roland Martin. He can be crazy at times, but he's highly yeah. intelligent, very knowledgeable. And I respect the hell out of him because he's real with his passion, even though I don't always agree with him, but I agree with him most of the time. And I definitely respect respect you a great deal as well. I guess I'm asking is that when we look at the Republican Party, you have people that feel like, hey, they talk about the Constitution. Well, the Constitution called us, you know, three fifths of a, of a man, of a human being. When people allude to the Constitution, that kind of worries black folks. They're like, wait a minute, you ain't talking about us because you didn't even feel we were full fledged human beings. You take those things into account and you hear Republicans talking about the Constitution and you hear them talking about the time where, you know, taking us back, driving us back. You see these kind of things that people have alluded to when it comes to the Republican Party. Are you saying they're false, that they have a complete, um, they, they're completely oblivious to what the Republican Party is all about? You might not be that way, but we're talking about a party and how the party has appeared to conduct itself throughout the last several decades. To all of that, you say what? Well, let's break down a couple of the examples. Sure. First, three-fifths clause in the Constitution. When the framers set it up, what actually happened was is that the southern states, the slave states, they wanted to count every slave, but they didn't want the slaves to have a vote. They wanted to use the slaves for the purpose of apportionment, for having more seats in Congress. And so the northern states were like, no, we're not going to let you use them as a number for you to get more seats, but then they have no ability, no agency to actually vote and speak their mind. So when they formed the Constitution, the compromise was three fifths. That's that's what happened there with Civil Rights Act and Voting Rights Act. It was the Republican Party. There's the reason why those acts passed. There were actually five civil rights acts that have been passed in the history of the country. Every one of them has been wholeheartedly supported by the Republican Party. The Democrat Party filibustered all five acts. And the only reason why the 64 Act even became law is because Lyndon Johnson got caught into a political a pillar where the Democrats were actually losing ground amongst a lot of people in the country because of their stances with, res with respect to historical support of Jim Crow, et cetera. I will say with where the party has been traditionally or, or contemporarily the last 30 years and talking about less government, it's because what I believe in a, and what Republicans believe is that more government policy, more government regulation actually takes away from human freedom and human liberty. I'm going to give you a, a quick example. Okay. In our banking system right now, the, the Democrats passed uh, when Barack Obama came in a bill called Dodd-Frank. It was supposed to regulate the banks and it was supposed to stop too big to fail. Well, what's happened since Dodd-Frank became law is that the big banks got massively bigger and it's community banks that have been basically destroyed under the regulatory burden. If you're a black man in America trying to start a small business, where are you going to get a loan from? Nowhere. A community bank or from Wells Fargo? Right. A community bank will take more of a chance on you than Wells Fargo Absolutely will. Absolutely. And I used to work for Wells Fargo, so I could be critical. And I've had accounts with Wells Fargo, so I know you know. I know exactly what you're saying. You're absolutely right. Yes. So to to me, having bigger government with more rulemaking at the federal level 
takes away from a human being's ability to be able to determine their own fate and their own destiny with their innovation, their hard work, the gifts God gave them, et cetera. And that really does line up with conservative principles and where the Republican Party is with respect to limited government. And I'll add real quick. Sure. It's not that Republicans want no government. That is not true. Okay. What we want is government in the confines of Article One, Section 8 of the Constitution. The government should do its job on the things that are its job, no more, no less. The rest should be left to the states and to the people. I agree. I agree with Byron Donalds. And you know what? A lot of people would bring up that three-fifths of a person clause in the Constitution, not knowing full well what all it entailed. It actually was just what he stated. The slave states, the Southern states, wanted to count the slaves in the population so they could get more seats. And the North was like, no, you can't do that. You're going to use them to get more seats, but you won't let them vote? No. So they came up with a compromise of three-fifths of a person if you are a slave. It did not state race in the Constitution. It didn't say you three-fifths of a person if you're Black. It says you are three-fifths of a person if you are not free. That's exactly what it st stated three-fifths of a person. And that was only because the, the Southern states were trying to, you know, play, you know, funny with the numbers. Yeah, we're going to count all the slaves so we get more seats, but then they can't vote. That's why they did it that way. So it wasn't just because, oh, just because you black, you three-fifths of a person. If you were a free black person, you were counted as a whole person. So it's good to know these things. It's good to know to have knowledge because a lot of times people, we don't have knowledge. We just know a little bit. And then we spew out things, not knowing the historical context behind it all. If anything, the way the federal government looks and operates is a lot like the Byzantine system from Major League Baseball. It simply is. And I think that if you had a conservative view on how the federal government should be allowed to operate its rules and its tentacles, its reach, it would look a lot more like um, the NBA or the NFL, where it's much more about your ability to run, jump, throw, pass, catch, shoot, lay up. If you have skills, but you're not the biggest jumper, but your skills are so dominant, that is recognized in, in the merit system of our economy. But when you put in so many rules that are put or that are there to quote unquote protect people and to help people and to save people, it actually does the opposite. It actually locks people out. It doesn't give them the room to run and to grow. Mm -hmm. And so then you're asking them to trust that some bureaucrat in some office in DC is gonna see your individual situation and help you out. That's just, it's, 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 it's always been illogical to me. And so what I've always wanted is a federal government. It has its role, it does its thing, but the rules to the road are very clear. So it allows you and I to just operate on the field of play. Like right now in the country, you know, with the uh, cryptocurrencies, yep. digital assets, we have a lot of young, young black people, young white people um, engaged in that industry. You know what the biggest problem is right now, what Stephen is A? What is that? It's that is that the Democrats on Capitol Hill want to overregulate the industry before they even find out what it is. So how are they going to be able to put their couple of Bitcoins together mm -hmm. or whatever they have and create a small business that right. could actually thrive when there's so many regulations in the system before they even start. That doesn't make any sense. I Give I, the industry an ability to grow. I agree with that. Can't argue with that one bit, but I would say this to you. You know this from growing up in the streets of New York, going to an HBCU and doing all the things that you've done and, and traveling through the, you know, just experiencing the trials and tribulations that you have. Sometimes, first of all, people don't have a lot of time to know what you know. I don't know half the things you know. I'm a very, very busy man. I would like to believe I'm accomplished. I don't have to, I don't, I don't know what you know. I'm going to go up and read a lot tonight and over this week and based off of this conversation. But you and I both know most of the constituency out there doesn't know the issues nearly as much as they should. So they rely Right. On individuals, they rely on sound bites, they rely on what's perpetrated over the airwaves, et cetera, et cetera. What you don't want is for you know a governor or somebody to say, This is what I'm doing, and everybody just puts their head in the sand, knowing that it's the wrong way to go. And and I think that so when you bring up that issue, it's actually really healthy because what the scholars put out 
Could you say it's technically correct? Yes. But how does it sound? How does that appeal to people? What's going to be the response of people? Will your opponent, when this, in this instance, I mean the Democrats, are they going to try to wield it and use it against you? The answer to that is also yes. So that's where I have a responsibility to come out and say, no, that doesn't make any sense. We should make a change to that. And I think that's healthy. And if you have a healthy party where you're allowed to have disagreement with people who are, you know, I'll say we're kind of at the top of the elected side of the party, that makes it for a better party overall. I will be more concerned if I made a statement like that and the entire party came out against me. Mm -hmm. That's actually not what happened. A lot of people in the party were like, man, thank you for saying that because I didn't agree with it, but I didn't know how to say it. Right. So when you said it, it actually gave me something to work from to be able to educate other people. You see, a lot of times in politics, no one's going to always agree, even when they're part of the same party. So you get together, you work about work up something that works for everybody, hopefully works for everybody. What I noticed is that a lot of people in politics, they sometimes disagree with the party but that they don't have the courage to say anything like just what happened here. There are Democrats, you know, I live in Georgia that are for school choice, but they are afraid to say anything because of the backlash, because the overwhelming majority of Democrats are not for school choice, which leaves black kids in poor performing public schools, reading below and doing math significantly below grade level, which is unfortunate, but black people vote Democrat, but okay. You know, I've said that over and over again. We vote for the party that actually hurts us. And a lot of times there are Democrats that want school choice, but they are afraid to say something. So it takes that one person, and in this case, Byron Donalds, to say something. And then they were over like, okay, I didn't agree with it, but I'm glad you said something. <laughs> it encourages them. So politics can be tricky, and sometimes you don't always agree with people, members of your own party, but someone has to say something. You know, someone has to have the courage, and it encourages the others to come along and follow suit. How the hell are you supporting Donald Trump at this point? At this point? I'm talking Go about I'm, I'm talking four count. I'm talking about four charges, 91 counts. I mean, people are talking about he gonna be he might you you could be in prison running a country from prison for crying a lot. Do I think that's gonna happen? Of course, I don't think that's gonna happen. But I'm just saying, how at this point could you possibly support Donald Trump? First of all, I'll tell you right now, between him and Joe Biden, this isn't even a question. Joe Biden sucks. He's terrible at the job. And we do have to acknowledge that before COVID-19, despite all the circus and the phony investigations, you know, the Russia collusion thing was phony. That's now come out to be proven. Despite all of the distractions in the circus, he actually did the job as president of the United States. Every demographic group was doing well under Donald Trump. Every demographic group was doing well. Our border was secure. There were no foreign wars that anybody was talking about that we were entangled in. Our country was booming. Energy prices were low. We were energy independent, something that every politician had said that they wanted to do. Donald Trump actually um, was able to make all that stuff happen. Now let's look at the actual charges. Do you mean to tell me that because a president of the United States had classified documents, who, by the way, former presidents still have their security clearance, they still get the daily presidential briefing, that now somehow this is a threat to national security, that is a joke, especially considering the fact that the only way the National Archives could even bring this, this charge, or excuse me, the FBI and the okay. Department of Justice could bring this charge, is that the White House counsel, who works for Joe Biden, had to allow it. That's one. Two, what's going on in Georgia? I'm sorry. Flat out wrong. And every candidate who runs is allowed to challenge election results. Every candidate. It's not some RICO charge. That's insane to me. And then when you take the other two charges, the one in New York, that one is this really, really stupid. And then the last one, the sixth one. Okay. They have no, hold on, this is important, Stephen. I want to lay this out. Please, go ahead. I'm not, they, I'm not they, have, they have no, they have nothing that proves that Donald Trump encouraged organized, structured, anything that happened with these six. This is weaponization of the Justice Department against a political rival. And it's flat out wrong. And here's my example for that. Okay. One of my colleagues, Steve, Sc Steve, Steve Scalise, yep. who was shot at the congressional Steve. baseball practice. The shooter said in his manifesto, 
The reason he went to shoot up the Republican baseball practice is because Bernie Sanders was saying that the Republicans want to take away health care and he felt it was wrong. Are we bringing Bernie Sanders up on charges because Bernie Sanders was using his political speech and it led, and it, and it led wrongfully for some knucklehead to come almost kill Steve Scalise? No, we don't do that. That's not the standard of justice. So just because they're using the justice system in a weaponized fashion doesn't take away Donald Trump's liberty to run for office or to be supportive. Of OK, well, let me let me let me come back at you. This is just my personal opinion, my humble opinion. Sure. Nothing compared to you in terms of the knowledge, because you do this for a living. Let me say this to you. Number one, I think the charges in New York are bogus. Uh, it's, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time, waste yeah. of government. Yeah. Uh, uh, no argument there. No argument there. Georgia, yeah, they got him on tape with those 11,700 votes he was seeking. Yeah, but I, I get it. I understand you. Now, the files at Mar-a-Lago. You had no business removing them from the White House. You saw the interview that he did with Brett Baer for Fox News, which I thought was mm -hmm. epic. OK, talking about you had shoes and, and, and socks and whatever the hell else he is in those boxes. Clearly, that wasn't the case. There was files in there. And more importantly, all you had to do was give the Department of Justice what they were asking for. You know, it, it, remember, they came to him and asked him for it, and he had refused to give it back. According to the report, you would know more than me. I'm certainly only going by what I'm reading, okay? So that, that so, so to me, that's problematic because if there's anything that's potentially endangering national or jeopardizing national security, they shouldn't be in your bathroom or your bedroom at your, at your spot at Mar-a-Lago. It should be contained. It should be in a secure location because lives, potential lives are at stake. Now let's get to the insurrection. I, <laughs> Presidential Records Act protects, allows presidents, but Donald Trump was president when he had those records. And they're allowing, you know, Byron Donalds is going to explain it more in detail. <laughs> Jim Crow Joe had records when he was vice president, which wasn't even protected under the Presidential Records Act because he was a president. But look, they're letting Jim Crow Joe go and, you know, going after Donald Trump. All these things are hoaxes. They're made up charges. They're trumped up charges, pun intended. They're trumped up. They're just weaponizing government government because they know they can't beat the man. Not fair anyway. I'm going to shock you here. I do think he incited. I do think he was irresponsible. I do not believe it was criminal. I do not believe that. I think it was highly inappropriate and wrong. There's no excuse for him to be when they were trying to certify the election. There was no excuse for him to go out there and rally and tell them we're going to go up to the U.S. Capitol. We've got to stop this and, you know, supporting people screaming about hang Mike Pence, you know, because you wanted to get him not to verify or certify the votes, you know, to make sure, the, you know, the, the transition of power took place peacefully, the peaceful transition of power. I do believe it was an irresponsible thing for him to do, but I don't believe it's criminal. The criminals are the ones that busted into the Capitol. The criminals are the ones that did those things. Not him saying he did use the word peacefully, because I'm no fan of the I've known. And I'll tell you that story. He did, in a second. He did, but say he that. did he use the word peacefully. He did say that. All right. They want to ignore that. But it's the truth. I got to give I got to yeah. say that. But it was irresponsible. And in closing, I'll say this. I believe the presidency is a statesmanship position. I don't believe that you can be somebody that is as divisive and dismissive of concerns that don't favor you and be the commander in chief of this nation. I think that leads to a divide. I think that's the kind of thing that can create civil war in this nation. And that is my concern. To that, you say what? Well, a couple of things. First, I'll say with respect to the six charges, yes, he said peacefully. We'll go to the Capitol, we'll, pe we'll protest peacefully. And in every one of his statements, he's always saying we'll protest, but we protest peacefully and we follow the law. The other thing I will add about January 6th, because of my time on the Oversight Committee, mm -hmm. is Donald Trump authorized 10,000 National Guard troops on January 4. So if he was trying to have violence at the Capitol, why would he authorize National Guard troops two days before to be at the Capitol? Mm -hmm. And the only person who said no to the, the, the National Guard being at the Capitol was Nancy Pelosi, mm -hmm. because Nancy Pelosi, being Speaker of the House at the time, is in charge of Capitol security. I know they don't report on this stuff, but that's the stuff that came out in the Oversight Committee. The second thing I'll say, going on what happened in Georgia, 
I've listened to that phone call. Everybody's listened to that phone call with him and Raffensperger. He's allowed to say, man, hey, I'm just looking for these votes. That yeah, doesn't mean there's a, oh, there's a criminal conspiracy. It just yeah. simply doesn't. Now to the documents. And this is this is the important one. OK. With the document situation, every former president has taken classified information with them when they leave the White House. Every single one. The, the, the National Archives Act gives them a five, the Presidential Records Act, excuse me, let me make sure I say it right, yeah. gives every president a five-year period to negotiate back and forth with NARA. It's always been an administrative process. Mm. With respect to them yeah. being, the picture of them being in the bathroom, I've been to Mar-a-Lago 10 times now. You just can't walk through Mar-a-Lago willy-nilly because Secret Service Protection is on the ground securing the president's personal quarters at Mar-a-Lago. So when they show these pictures, that's because the FBI took that picture and then leaked that picture to the press. It wasn't that somebody put it on their Instagram. That's the way they would want it to seem, but that's not actually the case. So the president under the Presidential Records Act, not just him, but every president mm -hmm. has the ability to go back and forth with the National Archives about what material is in a former president's possession, mm -hmm. and they do that. I truly believe what happened here is that you had some bureaucrat at the National Archives was basically like, oh, I saw something. Let's go in there and get it. They couldn't do it on their own. Mm. And so you had to have the White House Counsel's Office sign off on it because the president, Joe Biden, had to basically revoke Donald Trump's presidential privileges mm -hmm. in order to send in the FBI. Let, That's the issue with the documents case. Oh, okay, so I only got a few minutes left. Let me get to this real sure. quick. I need some quick answers from you. Yeah, we'll go quick. Four indictments, 91 counts. Why bother? Yeah. I mean, if, if DeSantis was in office, if Ramaswamy was in office, if Nikki Haley was in our office, if Chris Christie was in office, the, the list goes on. If you were there, According to how you sound, y'all all would probably vote pretty much identical or you'd or, or you'd run the country pretty close to how he did it from a policy perspective. Why don't y'all look at it and go like this? Look, man, we appreciate what he's done as president. We liked him. But you know what? This is a bit too much. Let's move forward with somebody else and get rid of all of this noise. Why can't y'all do that? Well, that's a great question. I think that there are some people who are there, but most of the party, in terms of the voters now, the, the Republican voters on the ground, they're not there. Mm -hmm. um, second thing is, is that, you know, as a Republican, it's all in vogue now to be a, a fighter and stand on principle and say no to the media and call them out uh, when they're being ridiculous at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. But before Donald Trump, no Republican was doing that. They would all turn tail and run if there was any political pressure or any media pressure whatsoever, because they were more concerned about poll numbers and actually doing the right thing for the country. So I think you have a lot of Republican voters who look at them and look at this and they say, when he was president, the country was in a significantly better place. They've been chasing him down for years, not just with the four cases. Go back to Russia collusion, the two impeachments and all that stuff. They've been going after Donald Trump since 2015. And the man is still here fighting these people. And in the mind of a lot of Republican voters, and I'll even say a lot of Americans, if this guy's willing to stand up to all of these people, He's got to be doing something right because the people that were running the country before they sucked at the job and they didn't know what they were doing. And the country was bet was worse off as a result. There you go. <laughs> it's the voters. We want Donald Trump. <laughs> you you got to put up the person that everybody wants. They don't really want the other candidates. We saw Donald Trump run away with the GOP nomination for president. That's what we want. And all the cases and situations that Stephen A. Smith brought up, the documents, you know, that's just everything that they're throwing at Donald Trump is like throwing spaghetti at the wall and trying to see what sticks. They're just doing this to keep him from tied up in court so he can't campaign, to drain him of his finances. They know that is foolishness. They know they have no significant legal ground. They know this is all election interference because they know they cannot beat Donald Trump fairly. Go, go and see my videos on what happened four years ago. You can go to Rumble. But they know. And the whole Stormy Daniels thing. So you paid somebody money to stay quiet, to sign an NDA? Okay. 
how many people have been paid money by politicians? That's 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 finished. That's ridiculous. The Presidential Records Act, he's covered. Those documents are covered under the Presidential Records Act. And all other presidents are allowed to take documents home with them. And Mar-a-Lago is secure. So that's ridiculous. He's allowed to question the results of an election. He didn't say go make up votes. He said go recount and find votes that you possibly overlooked. That's what he meant. So that's ridiculous. That's out. Everything that's going on in New York, they went back to an old law, an old law. So that's made up just because he, you know, supposedly overestimate to get better loans. You know how many companies probably did that and they're not in trouble. That's why businesses are leaving New York because they're like, uh oh, if they can do it to him, a former president of the United States, Donald Trump. Oh, no, they can do it to us. Letitia James is destroying New York. So that's a farce. Everything that the left comes up with, what happened, you know, a few years ago at the Capitol, farce, because Donald Trump ordered 10,000 National Guard troops a couple of days before, and Nancy Pelosi shut it down, shut it down. She's complicit. Her daughter, they're doing, get, they getting certain shots, who's a documentary filmmaker. Nancy Pelosi's daughter is a documentary filmmaker and got certain shots. Capitol Police led people into the Capitol. Capitol Police led them in. They didn't break in. Yes, there were some people who did things they should not have done, but there were informants throughout the crowd egging on the people causing this. You all can believe what you want to believe, but this is this whole thing with corrupt judges, corrupt DAs, corrupt attorney generals, this whole elaborate scheme to keep Donald Trump out of office. Now, he must be doing something right. You all give me your thoughts. Well, that's it for today's episode. You guys be blessed. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. And I want to also tell you that on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, I do go live. You all be blessed and march on, Warriors. Mm -hmm.